Hi everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about electromotive force or EMF of a cell. We know that what is a cell, right? No. Inside a cell, there will be a electrolyte, or the cell always maintain a potential difference by the chemical reactions to maintain a continuous flow of current, right? Okay. Just consider. An electrolyte and electrode. In chemistry, you studied about electric cell. How to make an electric cell? So here, uh, I drawn an electric cell, and electrolyte we have taken as diluted H2SO4, and we have two electrodes, copper and zinc. Okay. So when the chemical reaction happens, what uh, what happened to this H2SO4? It becomes H plus ions and SO4. Two minus ions, right? Now during the chemical reaction, it changed uh, hydrogen sulfide will change into H plus ions and SO four two minus ions. Okay, so what happens after this? It will approach these electrodes, copper and zinc. So uh, sulfate ion will approach the zinc electrode and impart electron uh, into that. Okay, same way this H plus ions approach copper and gains electron from that because it's having a deficiency of electrons. It has an excess electrons, right? So it will give electron to zinc and H plus ions accept electrons from copper. Okay, so if a material give electrons to other material or other atom, it will gain a charge of positive charge, right? So copper will become positive, and it attains or it gives a uh, it absorbs the electrons. So it attains negative charge. So zinc accepts the electrons, and copper gives the excess electron to hydrogen or H plus ions, and zinc uh, uh, accepts the electrons from the SO four ions. Okay. So because of that, uh, zinc becomes negative electrode and copper becomes positive electrode. And what we used to call it the positive electrode as anode. Okay, positive electrode is known as anode, and negative electrode is known as cathode. Okay, so now we'll see what is EMF of a cell. Okay, in this setup. This positive and uh, negative electrodes or anode and cathode maintain a potential difference, right? Okay. So when no current is drawn from the cell or in an open circuit, the maximum potential difference available between these electrodes are known as electromotive force of a cell, or as uh, we can define in another way. Just consider that. Through uh, an external wire, we are connecting a bulb. Okay, through an external circuit, we are connecting a bulb. So we can define the electromotive force uh, uh, more accurately. It is the amount of work done to bring a unit positive charge through the entire setup, through inside the solution and through outside the solution. So it is a work done to carry a unit positive charge throughout the circuit or throughout the entire setup is known as electromotive force, and it is always represented by a letter epsilon. Okay, it's known as epsilon. So we can write in terms of equation. If you are writing in terms of equation, epsilon is equal to work done by charge. Okay. Work done or the energy is spent to uh, take a unit positive charge to the entire circuit, and the unit of epsilon is same as that of potential difference V. Okay, consider this as a first equation. So electromotive force means it is the amount of work done to take a unit positive charge through the entire setup. That means outside and through the electrolyte. If we are considering this anode as the starting point, we are starting, uh, we are taking a positive charge from here, 
it has to go through this entire circuit and through this electrolyte and come back to this position. So a full round that is known as electromotive force. If you see the factors affecting the EMF, there are mainly two factors. First one, the material of the electrode and the solution. Okay, which kind of solution we are using or electrolyte. These are the two factors depends upon the EMF of a cell. Always we study the factors affecting or the dependable factors. Here we have to study the independent factors or which are the factors never affect the EMF. The size and shape of the electrode is never affected. We can take any size. It can be round in shape. It can be in the form of plate. It never affect the EMF. Then size and shape both will be there. And the quantity of the electrolyte that also doesn't affect the EMF. Then the distance between the plates that also never affect the EMF. So two factors dependable the material, copper and zinc, that affect the EMF. Hydrochloric acid or diluted sulfuric acid, whatever it is, that which material we are using as an electrolyte, that will affect the electromotive force. But it never affects whether half liter, one liter, 250 ml of solution we are taking, that never affect. Same way, round in shape, uh, flat in shape, or 1 meter height, 5 meter height doesn't affect the uh, EMF or even the distance between the uh, electrodes also never affect the EMF of the cell. So the next factor or the next concept what we are going to discuss is terminal voltage. Okay, so terminal voltage means in the same, with the same setup we can define the terminal voltage. Uh, here also the energy spent or the amount of work done to take a uh, unit positive charge from one electrode to another electrode or through the outside circuit. We are not considering the inside circuit. Only through the outside circuit how much energy we need to spend to bring a unit positive charge from one electrode to another electrode. That is known as terminal voltage. It is represented by the letter small v. Same way we can represent in the form of equation that is equal to w dash divided by q. So this work done is only applicable for the outside circuit and we used to consider it as terminal voltage. Or terminal voltage means uh, it is the voltage available in the circuit when it is in use. So when we connect different equipments uh, to the electrodes, how much potential difference will be available that is known as terminal voltage. This terminal voltage will be always less than the total effective voltage or electromotive force. Electromotive force means maximum available uh, voltage is known as electromotive force when it is when the uh, cell is not in use. This one when it started using only we are calculating the work done in the outside circuit. So obviously it will be less than that of the EMF. Let's see the next one. The terminal voltage is represented by capital V and voltage drop is represented by small v. So voltage drop means only we are considering the inside liquid portion. Only inside the electrolyte. So same definition it is the amount of work done to carry unit positive charge inside the electrolyte okay that is known as voltage drop we can represent voltage drop as cap small v is equal to w by q same way okay so that means or if you consider the voltage drop and terminal voltage the sum of the terminal voltage and voltage drop is equivalent to electromotive force or we can represent it as uh, electro EMF is equal to capital V plus small v. What is epsilon? Electromotive force. What is electromotive force? It is the amount of work done to take unit charge through the entire setup. Through outside circuit and inside solution. Right? And what is terminal voltage? Terminal voltage is the work done to take the unit charge only through the outside circuit. Okay. What is voltage drop? 
it is a amount of water to take unit charge inside the uh, electrolyte so outside circuit plus uh, inside circuit if we add it or if we take the sum we will get the total value as emf for electromotive force now we will see the differences between emf and terminal voltage what is emf it is a entire circuit it is the amount of work done to carry the positive charge to the entire circuit here it is only outside the circuit okay and emf is a characteristic property of the material it's a property of the material okay uh, it never depends upon the current drawn from the cell but terminal voltage it depends upon when it is in use how much current is available in the circuit so it depends upon the current drawn in the circuit okay so third point this is easy both side we feel like similar but there is a small side difference okay terminal voltage or emf emf is equal to terminal voltage when it is not in use okay emf is equal to terminal voltage when not in use if it is in use emf is greater than terminal voltage okay if it is not in use means the total available energy will be equal that's no current is drawn from the circuit okay now if you see the terminal voltage as a point emf is equal to terminal voltage here the first term is terminal voltage terminal voltage is equal to emf same way not in use okay when it is not in use it is equal but if it is in use terminal voltage is less than emf okay so here emf is greater than terminal voltage the same thing we wrote in terms of terminal voltage so these are the difference between emf and terminal voltage this thing is very very important for solving the numericals thank you